Right, we are back again. I get on the Facebook. I got hey, hey. I got him. I got one. I will be a friend with men that we know they play. They will keep messing with our things and will come back. So we are here on the search for Biafra. Sisters, you guys can share on other platforms for us while we get started. Because right, it's going to be hard for people to find out because this is not our typical platform. But it's okay. So our topic today is restoring power to the people. Our topic today, again, is restoring power to the people. It's like devil does not want us to complete this topic because he knows how important it is for our people. Every move we make, he will counter move it. But anyway, we are here to do the needful. So again, our topic is restoring power to the people. We know that people have been beaten and they are out. We know that once one, uh, anybody is out, that you have to medically resuscitate that person because they have lost consciousness. Everything about us has been manipulated. They've used everything to enslave us. They've used polit uh, politics, they've used religion, they've used culture, they've used tradition. They've even used freedom fighting. Why is this so? It seems like black men does not think deep. They do not look at things over and over again. So anybody can come and manipulate them. It seems that we have simple, basic and underdeveloped mind. It's almost as if we have a mind of a child a mind that does not critically analyze issues and challenges around them, a mind that looked at things at the face value attribute and attribute everything to God and evil spirit. We have this uh, victim mentality that believes that everything is always against us. We never take responsibility of our destiny. We always want to blame it on somebody else. This person did it to me, that person did it to me. We have a mind that does not understand that we, the human beings, have the authority as to do the needful. Because guess what? We've all left our destiny to some spirit that we don't see. Because Pastor uh, Adiboye's church is telling us that our mothers and our uncles are holding us down. We tend to leave it to some person out there that is controlling us with remote control and having us to do what they want us to do. It's about time we take the power back and realize that we, the people, have the power to ensure our destiny. Sister Augusta. Yes, that's true. We, the people, have the power to ensure our destiny. Before I go further, let's just make sure you can hear me. Sister Muna, can you hear me? Yes. That's true. We, the people, okay, have... Good. I just wanted to come Yes, that. I think it's this God <laughs> info. Yeah, have, have computer issue from the zoo government. I don't know why I would buy a new laptop and it's... <laughs> Causing my show not to go on. <laughs> they can only try us, but the truth is that we are not giving up. They are, they are in heaven. They haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> so when women decide yeah. to start struggling for this struggle, you will see a change. Absolutely. If women, we are different. We are resilient. We, we know what we're doing and we'll continue. So let's just uh, go ahead. So as you rightly said, it's so important, it's very imperative that we know what we are doing in this restoration and that we need to look deeper than what we are seeing. We don't have to look at things at the face value. We need to go back and sit down and critically analyze what we did before versus what we are doing right now. So we need to do that. As we've often said in this program, we cannot leave the zoo and go to the museum. Remember, in the zoo, you have animals that are still alive. It's just that for some reason they're incarcerated. But in the museum, the person is already dead. They've embalmed the person already. So we cannot leave the Nigerian head chief or uh, move to Biafra. There needs to be something else. So that is why we have to sit back and, you know, look at things critically, have everybody involved so that we can get this thing right. In the past, in the sisters, when we had our, 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 the fight, the, the Biafran war, you know, it was there we're trying to free Nigeria. But what really happened? How, what, what, how did we fare then versus now that we are struggling? What didn't we get right then? Those are the things that we, start, we need to start looking at critically. What made us to leave the British slavery and enter into a Fulani enclave? How did we move from one uh, uh, slave master to another? We need to also look at that and dissect it properly. Where did we go wrong? Where were we not able to project into the future? Like know the challenges that we face back and probably, you know, walk back on it. As I've often, you know, talked about once in a while when my husband and I will always have this argument, uh, not argument, but, uh, uh, to say, discussion about the Biafran struggle. 
we looked at uh, Odumegu Ojuku when he, the, the Biafran War ended. If he had, because he was in exile for like 13 years, if he had remained in exile and continued interim government for Biafra, probably we would have moved to a new level by now. So those are the things we are supposed to look at differently. What happened in the past versus what is happening right now. So we have to start looking at the challenges of today and appreciate what happened in the past to be able to figure out how to face the one for today. So why did we have to wait until people started dying in the thousands before we start to wake up? The same mistake we made then, why are we still making it now? As we progress, people have been calling our attention to serious issues. Like you all saw how the can uh, chairman from Adamawa was beheaded. I mean, you all, and I, I couldn't watch it, trust me, because I know that for months, for weeks, I would not recover. Mm. Yes, yes, I couldn't watch it. But you all saw how he was beheaded. And guess what can he say? That you all should go and do prayer fasting, three days prayer fasting. How does that help us? As I said before, I'm not against prayer or fasting, you know, spirituality is important, but there's something that God gave us. God gave us our brain. Okay, fine, spirituality is important. What happens to physically protecting your territory? What happens to that? What happens to you not letting out Sapula need to come to your vicinity and kill you? As I said before, they're already in our towns and villages. They're already in my village. I saw them koro koro with my eyes. They're already there. They're situated there. They're married there. They're even speaking my language. They're speaking my dialect. Me, I know this speak a well where They're speaking me. I'm like, whoa. These people, they have embedded themselves inside. And it's going to be so difficult to kind of like start pulling them out because they are there for a mission. They are there for a mission. And this mission, they're about to execute it. And our people are sitting down, still hoping and praying, praying and fasting, asking God to come down. When God has already given you the word with us to figure yourself out, you're asking God to come and do your own fighting. But God is busy. You know how many billions of people we have on earth that God has to attend to? Small people now, now need to stop here. When He has given you, how to go about it? So these are the things we need to put into our perspective. We need to sit back and think about this thing very well. Right, and our people have started to feel like they are now so interested in anybody that gives them a flicker of hope. They are now so interested. If you talk about Biafra, they start listening to you, even if it doesn't make sense. You understand? Hmm. Even, if, even if you're showing your breast and showing your underwear, is everything it's all about. I'm telling you, it's, yeah. so, it's so crazy, you know, it's so crazy. And that is why we are calling on the professionals now. So take the man to two step, you know, waking up. Because we are tired of the shenanigans. We are tired of this uh, half baked. I don't want to put it that way, but we are tired of people that don't know what we are talking about just because they have the Biafran flag or whatever, then they cannot just say whatever they want to say without going back to study how what happened in the past versus what we are trying to project now in the future. So that it's it's it, 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 it's so different, you understand. And our people will, they fall for that. They fall for that. We have a whole lot of them on Facebook. All they needed to see is your cleavage, they start following you. That's how it works for our people. Not thinking of how or, or you take a picture with a white person and then they'll start clapping. That deception, that one is even the worst. Because remember, that gives hope to our people that oh, after all this school, it's white people also. Or kind of like I just call my neighbor here that will start picture with your friend flag guys. <laughs> 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 We just, it's a discussion we have to, you know, avoid. We, we really, really have to avoid that. And our people are so gullible, they believe it. And you don't want to, you don't want to blame them. These people are already down and out, as Sister Muna said. They are so, you need to see, it. oh my God, they are down and totally out. They don't even, they don't, they don't care where the hope is coming from. All they want is freedom. And that is what we are seeing. We, we don't want people giving them false hope that freedom is going to come by shouting and screaming and praying and, uh, 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 there are strategic methods. There are fundamental methods, fundamental things that we have to do. There are things that professionals have to go out there and do. Things that are systematic. Things that professionals have to handle. You know what I mean? Lawyers, where are the lawyers? Where are the different lawyers, wherever they are? They are supposed to go out there and start writing things and looking at the laws and appreciating international law versus uh, uh, local laws and the... Uh, and the uh, and the Nigerian law and what all what all the laws that they have, they are supposed to be out there and unnecessary these things that will benefit us. They're supposed to be out there doing that, but they are they just start one place and hoping that one person with spiritual brag a, a, a bragadabra will 
give us the address. It's not going to happen. As Elijah said, they've used several methods to enslave us. They've used religion. When they call Elohim, you get so and proud. You're like, oh, yes, this guy is calling Elohim. I will call Jesus. And when they call Jesus Christ, you will hey, this guy is calling Jesus Christ. I will follow him. And you have forgotten that everybody, even Jesus himself said, they will call me, call me, call me. They will use my name to do all kinds of miracles. And you just have to be careful. You just have to need, have the um, um, discerning spirit to understand which one is which. I'm sorry, I'm like, you're like I'm going off the point right now, but the truth about it is that sometimes you just want to say the way it is. You want to say the way it is. So we don't want a situation where we will get into a Biafra that would not make sense. Like America has had their freedom for 200 years and it has been so stable. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect. It's got nothing is perfect, but they have made it so stable that if we want Biafra, if we have to look for the stability in what we're doing. And that is how we're calling all our professions, wherever you are, doctors, lawyers, whatever, whatever you know, if you know how to write, start writing stories that will get us the Africa. Start meeting the people that matter, not just go on Facebook and, you know, snap pictures and think it's that. So start going into the offices and talking to them. We don't even need to start doing those underground jobs so that we can get this. If not, we will remain with these people for God knows how long. And it's tasteless. Remaining with them is very, very tasteless. Thank you, my people. It's tasteless indeed, my dear. And that's why we're calling on the professionals. I like the way you said, if you know what to do, start doing it. And it's not the person that shouts the most, mean that you've done the most work. We want people, people want to run around a team because all can go. You don't scream, you're there, can be calculative. So we are calling on our people, on our professionals, on our brothers and sisters, wherever you find yourself, on our clergy. Because Sudney, I know here in Texas, they are hiding in all the villages, especially the Catholic uh, priests. And you're dealing with all these uh, uh, party, uh, what is it called, rich Americans. Can you get involved and tell them about our stories? Can you get them on that work and get them to understand what we're trying to do? You don't have to come out and shout. We don't want you to shout. What we want is like, hey, make sure you can walk. We're not here to shout because at the end of the day, it's all about getting key deliver on the table. We've learned what we've seen what we've done for so many so many years shouting. It's time now that we get people that are, that are important, strategize strategize with people that are uh, uh, that, that has the business uh, or the acumen into what we are doing. The people that have the experience in international law, like my sister Augusta said, because nothing, no Biafra will come without you going through the political process. None. No amount of screaming will change you for us. So Nigeria being a sovereign country, the zoo being a sovereign country, nobody will come and there, boom, this side. You see, it still had to be done politically. The same way they killed us during the Afghan war, it was done politically to end it. The same way that Igeji separate to my politically, nothing else. It's about time our people start getting that and stop deceiving themselves. You know, we I went to a Republican rally with the government of uh, governor of Texas last week. I could have posted it and tell you guys I'm getting Biafra. No, I just went there, he shook my hand, and that was it. I don't need to show pictures. We need to make sure that we are working truly for our people and not just making noise. See, stay with me. My sisters, thank you very much. The deception is too much. I need breaks my heart because my people are so ignorant. They don't understand how these things work in international scene. So any cock and bull story tell them, they will start shouting, you know, Korean Aru cocaine. Just give them one shot. They will get high, thinking that uh, <laughs> it's real moral. No, but you're on, you're on hard drugs. And the name of the hard drug is deception, manipulation. Hmm. They give you shot by shot. And you give one shot, you got high. When you wake up from your highness, you're on the floor. Nothing has been done. Mm. And that's why we are saying we need to restore power to the people. We want a long lasting freedom. We don't want freedom of today and tomorrow bondage. Like Sister Augusta and Mirete. What we are looking for is independence. This is not the first time people went for independence and got independence. It's not different. Nobody got gets independence by just shouting on the Facebook. Like this Augusta and Merite, there are ramifications, there are laws, there are things that need to be done. Diplomats need to do certain things. There are professionals that will go in and do certain things. You don't stop at raising awareness. It's good to raise awareness. 
So when you're done raising awareness, you need to do the job. If that's why we say the people need to be involved. Any long-lasting freedom must involve all the stakeholders. No oh. shortcut. Oh. No shortcut. Anybody telling you that a shortcut is a liar and to stop lying to my people. No shortcut. We are not the first to look for independence. There are ways things are done and they must be done. Those, those ways must be done. Those things must be followed. Protocols must be followed. Stop manipulating the ignorance of my people. What is all this? There are pro protocols to be followed. And those protocols need to be followed by professionals, not by shouting on the streets. Hmm. It's okay to shout and air your frustration, but after you're done, you need your professionals to go in there and meet other professionals out there in the world. Some of them are their classmates. We are their classmates. Some of them, they were together. When you finish shouting, they meet over coffee and say, what was that stupid boy saying? He said, don't mind the stupid woman or don't mind the stupid man. This is how these things are done. My people's man in Mobile, over that day, Kuburo Mobile. There are people that came before us and they own these things. Do you know that in our land, we have investment? Nations have invested in our land. Their investment is there. And they want assurance that their investment and interest is protected. Who is negotiating that? Who is discussing that? You think you will discuss that on radio? No. This involves meetings, protocols, and that's what we cannot do without our professionals. A long-lasting freedom will involve all the stakeholders. It must involve all the parties that need freedom. Like Sister Muna said, there are lawyers that have experience in international law. They need to be involved. I was talking to someone and he was like, I asked him, I said, where are the diplomats going for these negotiations with you people? He said, we'll just call them and then we'll call anybody and brief them. I said, so if you have a law case, you call a teacher and brief the, the teacher to go and present for you. Is that, is that <laughs> Is it a lawyer you will call mm. and brief them? So you call a teacher and teach him how to practice and how to go to law? Do you think you win that case? Mm. And then you leave our people that you can easily governize and use freely. You go and make my poor people to contribute money to start paying white people that you know you cannot afford their services. Meanwhile, my people are there free of charge. You just carry them along and then you go and deliver. How do you put a cart in front of the horse? How do you think you move? And that's why as women, we are calling on our people to wake up. It's time to restore our land. Freedom is not what somebody will get for you and give you. You will not want that type of freedom. That freedom will have strings attached. It will be a type of freedom where that when you get it, then you're not sure whether you're free or you're still in bondage. Because you move from one slave camp to another slave camp. Because you gave absolute power to certain people. It is your fault. So you do not do that. You want to be involved in what is going on. All the people in that land occupying that geographical space need to be part of what is going on. Any freedom that the people are not completely and totally carried along is deception. Those people or that person has ulterior motives, even if it's me. That person has ulterior motives. That person has not told you the real truth of why he or she is involved in what he or she is doing. Any long-lasting freedom, we first of all empower the people. Restore power to the people. Tell the people, carry the people along. Every member of that enclave, if, you are, if there are 300 ethnic groups, they will be involved. You will not go and speak on behalf of anyone. They will have their leaders. You will gather with your leaders 
how you will meet together, and then you go and present what you want to present. That's the only way you will get a total and complete freedom. A freedom that does not have strings attached. A freedom that does not have comma. A freedom that does not have careless. A freedom that does not have only the dumb and leave the free. A freedom in the economical, socially, religious wise. Complete freedom. The freedom that all of us can boast of. It. The type of freedom we can hand over to our children like the Americans. That's the type of freedom we're talking about. Everybody must be part of it. Everybody must be part and parcel of what is going on. You can't afford to allow one woman or one man to go and negotiate on your behalf. Things are not that now. You galvanize yourself and you set up things. And they are there. We keep saying, we're not looking for our people. Our people are there. You just for people to understand that everybody has to be our part and parcel of what is going on. So cut this journey short. Otherwise, we'll be here going in circles, uh, snapping pictures and changing to you. I can snap picture with my pastor. I can send to you. I put it on Facebook. I can snap pictures with people. How do we do? I don't have to. Like, I'm not in the business of deceiving my people. And that's why we call ourselves daughters of truth. Who will tell you the truth? Mm -hmm. the yes. Who will tell you that somebody is using your ignorance and your sentiment to manipulate you? And it's high time you woke up. Stop being dumb. Stop being gullible. Use your brain. Think. You're not the first to seek for independence. And you won't be the last. So the earlier you get power back to yourself, the better for you. The earlier you stood up, and said, this freedom is about my freedom. What is my part in it? What is my role? I don't want to just shout. I want to do something more. I want to get the traditional leaders, the politicians, the people on the ground involved. How do I begin to lead them? Because you're not going to come and conquer us. You cannot restore Biafra in diaspora <laughs> and move over. And conquer the people in Biafra land already. We must work together. Like the Yorubas, like Sister Augusta said. We saw what the Yorubas did. They worked with their elders, they worked with their people. They did not demonize their people and thought they can do it by themselves. No, you cannot. You must humble yourself. Get yourself down from that your high horse. Go down and get your fingers dirty. Because my people say, Aka Jaja, me mono mano mano. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I can't judge any name. Mano, mano. You know, one thing, one thing I've realized about Africans, I think they like to be controlled. There is something inherent about them being controlled, like somebody being in control of them. I don't know if it's coming from the colonial master, like they doing something on there. Unless if they see one now, they hear one and have one, their ability don't control me. But if they see somebody else somehow, they just love that sense of uh, being controlled. And uh, when we do all these things that are negative towards our restoration project, then we make up excuses why people will not be involved in what we are doing. And we even lie about it. We say that people are wicked. We say they're the educated and the rich are greedy and selfish. They don't want to be part of this. So if you, you, the person that is calling them all these things, wicked, selfish, if you have investment, right? Because some of us that are shadowing all this shadow, we don't have any investment. If you have an investment to protect, which one would be more important to you? My investment to protect, to make sure that I'm taking care of versus the other one. So that's, you have to be truthful to yourself that that's how most human beings will reason. It does not necessarily mean that's how all we reason, but that's how we, all human beings, most human beings will reason. So you have to put all those things into account. And that's what we're saying that when you're doing this thing, look at every aspect of it. Don't just see as one aspect. Fine, I'm okay. I don't want anything from the Afrans. But there are some people that are doing this because they want something for beer friends. Are you there to stop them? You know, so you have all these people that we want to be part of our struggle. And we're asking all these things that we are hearing, wickedness, greedy. Is this really the case? Or is there any other ulterior motive? You know, is there more that meets the eye? Is someone or some people using this struggle to manipulate our people? Are they riding on the fact that our people are not fully educated about certain things? Are they playing on the intelligence of our people? 
and we ask, where are our professionals again? Where are they? You know, no world will function. Let's see if you want to live in uh, 1800 or 1700. You need your professionals. You're not going anywhere without your technocrats. You're not doing, going anywhere without your scientists. You're not going anywhere without your professors. You're not going anywhere without your gallant men and women. We have lawyers who understand international law and diplomacy. Why are we not trying to hook them up instead of trying our luck? We have people that really understand how these things are done. But we choose to try our luck in 2021 or 20. We have people with blueprint that have tested, tried and proven, and we are doing this alone. We have people that have direct connection to even this Trump, I know who we are now. And we've overlooked them, thinking that we're posting a picture of a white person will do it for, you, for us. Why are we willing to lobby, even to the extent of giving our money to an oil to white people in order for them to lobby for us? And this is something that we can render free by ourselves, if only we are willing to talk to each other. If only we are trying to, if only we will try to communicate with our brothers and sisters. Yet, we don't have money but we want our people to pay for lobbying, to bring money, to do a job that our brothers and sisters can do free of charge and with our support. Yeah. Who is fooling who here? Who is fooling who here? How do we think that we will import freedom and destroy those already struggling for the same freedom before us? Or like my sister rightfully asked, how do you think you will get it in diaspora and then come and implant it back home? How do you think you're going to do that? We know there are, there are several many or several uh, self-determination group working underground for our people, a lot of them. And whatever we can do to promote whatever they are doing and see what works for best for us, that's what we should be, we, that's what we should be doing. We have the likes of Tony Nadi that is working, doing an excellent job. The poor guy has been doing this for 20 years. He recently posted his 20 years uh, um, uh, what is that thing called, my sister? Timeline. Uh, uh, timeline. timeline, timeline of how far he has gone in this struggle. And that's what we look for. We, the educated, we want some type of timeline. You may work for people that are in the market screaming. You wait for your market to burn down and then you're throwing things on the other side. For we that are educated, if I want to invest in a million dollar business, I will make sure that my store is fireproof. That's number one, because I have million dollars in it. I will not just go and build and say when it may go, and then I will just get a building and boom, throw my things in there. So when the fire comes, I know there's no fire department there. I will be waiting for God to help me throw my stuff outside. Just a way it has to be done. And other people like me So all we are doing is copy and paste. We don't even have to go and start reading. You just start by, I'm investing $7 million. That's a lot of money. First, how do I make sure that whatever I'm using this $7 million is protected? And you start from there. The first thing they make a chincham nishi is make sure there is a tendency for fire. Make sure that my store is fireproof. Or better yet, have a warehouse somewhere that is not in the market and just have a display stock. So I don't use all my head, then I'll go where Ndiro will not know where my shop is to go and bring it. So many ways you can do it if you're a professional. But if you're not a professional, you're one of those that just sitting there, anything they tell you, you'll fall to the left, or right, you'll fall to the right. If you see a picture of a white person, in 2020, that we're still flying all over with a picture of a white person. We walk with them every day. We can easily take a picture and put a, a distance on their neck and have them snap and tell them that we're doing a distance. Enough of this madness. Enough. This poor guy has worked for so many years with the Eurobas, with the middle belt. And now the result is speaking for, the, for itself. You know, they have weaving, as we're telling you, they are working with people that matters, making strategic connections, people that will help us to get where we are going. So we encourage those doing this hard work for our people. We encourage those working on the ground to propagate our freedom. And we say, may God bless you as you do your part. As you magnify your efforts, as you do your F as you do I, I see you do your part god will magnify your effort that's what i wanted to say so my people we just have to make, remind ourselves that we have the power to get what we want we just have to apply reason and wisdom first no more sentiments no more oh my papa said this my mama said this no here your papa and my mama said it does it make sense 
Is he going to work for you? If, if Jesus himself comes down now here, we should be asking him, oh God, what is your strategy? Get your timeline and your plan for all of this. Because I have got a Bible, I am not there now, God, I be a brother and Iran, you are slaves. Took us to uh, other countries and if Ndoji, if you go on YouTube, do you know that Ndoji are all over the places because all these slave masters drop them somewhere in the forest and all over the world. So any week and even when there are white people there, you will see on Ndoji somewhere in the bush somehow because we've been picked up. So we don't want any more manipulation. We want what works. I can ask you the right kind of question, the right kind of uh, movement. Nobody should tell us anything and we'll go, oh, but it, you know, we, it needs to make sense to us. It needs to make sense to us. We need the step. We need the goals. We need the timeline. We need, and it does not make you a bad person. So please, don't feel like, oh, yeah, and I should not ask you a question like that. That's madness. That is madness. It's me like giving my vote to Trump and not knowing if he's going to restore Biafra for me. I'm just nah, yeah, wishing that he will restore. No, I need to know this vote. Can he get him in return? That's the way you should be working. It does not make that's how American function. They will not question you about that. So don't be uncomfortable about somebody giving you money like we Africans. Somebody will give you money instead of you to count it in front of the person to make sure the money is the amount. You will say, Oh, go on your and get I'm on or go tire. Excuse me. Once you go home, you go tired, you better come up with that hundred dollars. The person will call you a bad person. But guess what? You will stop all that problems when they give you the money. You say, hey, let's make sure it's the $1,000 that you said it is. And you take your envelope. You guys will have an agreement to write in front of everyone. And you will go your way. You must get it right. Even if you're not educated, you must hear make the sense. We hear make the sense. I don't think in the, in the Chinese, and then the, all of them are educated. No. But they are making their country work for them. For them. It's about time we start using our senses, Sister Augusta. Yes, that's right. You said it's about time we start using our senses, and that is when we say ignorance, you know, is please when we don't know what we are doing. But the truth about it is that our people, ignorance has actually harmed them more than it has bettered their lives. So there are so many questions that beg for answers, a whole lot of them, as you rightly said. If we cannot go to the hospital and spend on trained workers to treat us, how then do we want to achieve? freedom without our trained hands. And the reason why we are calling on our trained hands is that they know what the law says. They understand the law. They know how this thing cannot be manipulated. This thing is not, it's not like a um, uh, rocket science or how do they say. It is something that is written and you have to follow due process. Due process is happening all the time. Protocols have to be followed all the time. And that is why we are calling on people. There's somebody on Facebook that was saying, oh, that we're telling people not to shout, but we're shouting. The truth about it is that we're not shouting. We just want to amass our people's ideas. We want to tell them that everybody has to get involved. Everybody has to get involved. We don't want our people to be manipulated. We don't want our people to sit back and allow one person to get us freedom. We want everybody, every time, every day, every hour to be part of the struggle. And that is why we are here talking. But the truth has to be told. Because some of us, or those people that have worked in the past, some of them have been silenced into, they have been blackmailed into silence. There are certain things they can't even come up to say. Because the little thing they will call you a saboteur, even though you are the one with the ideas. In the case of Tony Nadi, he has a blueprint. He has been following his blueprint for more than 20 years. And that blueprint, step by step, strategically following this. And that is what we are talking about. If we don't have a timeline, we don't have a blueprint, then what are we talking about? What are we doing? What in actual sense are we doing? Are we putting people on notice? For kind of like they don't have time, their own problems, they won't even figure it out yet. Then they will start noticing us. So that is what we are saying that we need to unless every professional has to be involved. Every single available, everybody has to be involved. Everybody is a stakeholder. Try and start thinking of what you can do differently to bring us together. It is very important. In the case of Tony Manny, that Sister Mona mentioned, he's a lawyer. He works with our company. So he understands this. He understands how he works. He understands international law. And all these legal ramifications and processes that we have to undergo, they are all the, the things that are outlined. If you go to his website, all these things are outlined. Times, things that they've achieved, uh, how they've achieved it, and all works. They are outlined. 
and he is working with everybody. He's even working with the middle daughters. He's working with the Yoruba. And I, I, you know, try to let them understand why this this Nigeria has to be broken into pieces. He's working with them. It's free. Really, there's lower Niger Congress or whatever, but the truth about it is that he's working for our people. And I people want to understand that. So he said, and people are realizing, hey, this guy is saying the truth. So every other communities or that are involved in freedom fighting that begin to understand where they get with their own line, you know, and what they have to do to achieve their own uh things. And you can see that within Yoruba when they brought the brother Amotia they are all their elders were involved, and that is why it's working. That's why this Amotego has come to stay. There's nothing the Fulanese are going to do about it. Nothing. Even they started in Lagos now, they stopped the Okada riders. The reason why they stopped, in as much as it might affect our own people too, or might affect people that are less privileged, they know that the majority of people, Okada riders in Lagos, are these Aosa Fulanese. And guess what? They are beginning to relocate because riding Okada, they've stopped it in you know, some areas in Lagos too. You cannot ride a product really like that. So these people are these are being bundled and they're going back to wherever they came from. Because that is the easiest job they can do. And they write this Okada to know the look and screening of everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's almost like a Google map, GPS. Google GPS in all the place. Mm -hmm. They know your villages. They can tell you, they will say, like when my sister was coming home, she had to, she wanted to pick an Okada. Okada now, where you like, oh, then oh, I'm for you was coming villages. Let's have to go to the house and let's have for a taxi. Because I was late in the night. You understand? So they know your streets, they know your villages, they can tell you they have built next. I have these people, they strategic in their planning. And that is what we are talking about. That we also have to be strategic in our planning. We have to be. So let us have started their own. What are we doing? And that is what we are saying. We have to start involving our government. Even as much as you don't like them. Me personally, I don't like any one of them. But the truth about it is that they always have to start in, in, involving our elders. We have to start telling them what they, they have to start listening to us. We're going to go through a different approach. Not by, you know, maligning them or cussing them out. We're not going to be cussing them out anymore. We need to go to them and say, hey, these things, you know you, how you know, they are doing and how they're saving themselves. When you start saving us, we need to start aligning with people and everybody. We need to start asking our people to get involved. You see, this security outfit by the Yoruba, the middle belters are starting their own too. It is strategic. Because now that they've started their own, they'll start talking about their own freedom. And everybody will be involved in it. Their elders, their, the, even their girls on the street will be involved in their freedom fighting when it starts. They want to be able to move out from this contraption without war. And that is why we're saying we need our diplomats, we need our technocrats, we need our our lawyers everywhere they are. Just come and be part of this. It's not late because if we don't do this, we are going to remain in this enclave forever. And it's not just going to affect us; it's going to affect our children and our children unborn. Or you may say, "Oh, you live in abroad, you live in a mansion, you are these are comfortable, you don't need to go to Nigeria and all that." But trust me, each time you go to go and visit probably a parent or, or, or I mean, law, whatever, you will still see how our people are being messed up. The Eastern region is totally taking over. It is. No good roads, no water, no light, nothing. Everybody provides his own stuff. And you say you live in a country. And you call that a country. Oh, my goodness. So we're asking our, our people, if you're a lawyer, try and start working with people that matter. People start talking to, start talking to people that needed to be talked to. And that is what we are saying in this case. Thank you, my sister. Absolutely, my sister. We will go to every part of this universe to ensure that Biafra is restored. That's just what it is. Black people need that freedom. Our people have suffered. Our people are still suffering. So whatever that we need to do to make sure that this thing comes to fruition, the sooner the better. The sooner the better. Because any day Biafra is not restored, that's another day for our people to die. Sister, so people ahead. Yes, my sister. Um, we cannot uh, sugarcoat the issues. We have to say it as it is. Um, we are talking, and somebody on Facebook, like Sister Gossa said, you're shouting. <laughs> Some of our people are just impossible. <laughs> we 
we are telling you, you going on Facebook, that thing. We are putting the world on notice. We say we not we not give you freedom. That's what we're telling you. That's what we're saying. And like my sister said, he said everybody cannot be bad, and then only one person is the saint. You check it now, my people. Everybody is bad. Only one person is the saint. That doesn't sound okay to me. It doesn't. The Biafra we want is where there will be a level playing ground. Whatever you have, you bring it to the table. It's not impossible that my sister doesn't have anything to bring to the table. It's only me that has something to bring to the table. I don't know what they are now. It's not um, okay. So we want a level playing ground in the nation we are talking about. Whether right from even in joining to restoring it to when we have restored it. We want a place where everyone will have a voice. Even if you're saying something that is stupid, talk, and we'll correct it. Mm -hmm. But we cannot stifle you. You cannot take your voice out. Or even go to the extent of killing you, or blackmailing you, because you're saying what you don't agree with. That's not democracy, and that's not the nation we want. We want a case where the whole truth will be presented to our people. And they will be encouraged to make the right decision. We don't want a case where we say, oh, our people are stupid and wicked. And because of that, let's manipulate the truth and manipulate their brain. It will not lead us to where we're going. That's a wrong direction. And that's why we mentioned, like, the, uh, our brother, as my sisters mentioned, uh, Mr. Tony Nandi. He has proposed a system where we gradually ease out this current Nigerian fraudulent constitution. So he calls it one big grammar that I have to get dictionary to break down. <laughs> <laughs> but all I know is that what he's saying is we gradually ease out this fraudulent constitution and then move in and then we referendum mm -hmm. what we are looking for. The referendum that be acceptable to all stakeholders. You cannot, you cannot do it. And there's a law in you and you're explaining to me that the, the law says Yoruba people will have to fight for Yoruba land. Igbo people will have to fight for Igbo land. Ijo people will have to fight for Ijo land. So Igbo man cannot free Ijo man. Mm. That's not, it, it's against the law. Mm -hmm. Whatever the UN put in place. And these lawyers are the people that know it. Like our brother Tony Ned will say, he's a lawyer. Who else understands international law except the people that have studied it? I have my area. When you come to my area, I will school you. But when I come to your area, you will school me. It's called division of labor. But the time I'll tell you that uh, you don't know it, it's me that I know it. I'm in health profession and I'll go into teaching and start telling the teachers what to do. Meanwhile, they are professional, they've been trained, you know, like they are teachers, professional teachers. No, these are not done that way. That means they are deception somewhere. So I want a situation where all our people will be involved in what is going on. That geographical space, whether you call it Biafra or you call it uh, Lower Niger Congress, it's not really an issue at this point. So there's something my people call it and it it an onion no. You know, a couple, they were trying to go and buy a, a dog. And they started fighting over the name. The one saying this one, the one saying this one. But I even know a couple that actually fought over a child. That an unborn child. The husband said we will name him this way. The mom said we will name him this way. The child was not born yet. And honestly, eventually they don't have a silver. Because maybe the child heard and said, the trouble is too much. Or just name. The name will come is causing trouble. Mm -hmm. so this, that child died. Mm. And he was born dead, dead. So all the fight that we are fighting was for nothing. So that's the danger of fighting for things that do not matter. My sister will say, making strategic alliance with people that matter, saying the things that matter. Because eventually, all autonomous nations within this geographical space will come into alliance. And decide what they will answer. You cannot get a name or whatever and push it down their throat and say you must accept it. 
That's not democracy. They will come together and decide where the capital will be. They will come together and decide what constitution will govern them. That's why you see in constitution they say, we the people. So do not get deceived by um, the things that uh, this uh, Shifro country, Nigeria, you know, the way they do things. Uh, Abu Salam and we gather his uh, crooks. They will enter inside one hotel room and scribble some things on paper and say, this is your constitution. And they say, we the people. <laughs> I I how will do? But what other has to do? You cannot write constitution with your friends and impose it on uh, on uh, my people and say it's we the people. No. So that's why I say don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, they don't want to do faster than your shadow. Okay, don't do for me. I want to do for myself. So the people will be carried along. They will decide who will lead them. Their president, their leader, they will decide it. They have the ability to do so. They will come together, the autonomous, autonomous nations will decide the type of power they will give to the central government. That's why we keep telling them that Nigeria is not a true federation. Because the central government is swallowing up all the autonomous regions. Mm -hmm. That's crooked. That's not right. So we will not repeat the mistake of yesterday. And that's what I'm saying. Our people need to be able to make projections. If we go this way, where will they lead us to? It's not okay for you to say, let's just be doing it first. When we get there, we decide. No. And we women, we are saying no. If you men, that's what you want. We are the ones giving birth to the children that are dying. So we are saying no. We don't want to be going first. When you get there, we decide. No. We said no. We will decide now. You will tell us the way this road is he leading to a cave or is leading to a cave. So that we will know that we are going to where we agree we go to. We will need to begin to see this freedom we are talking about. You cannot stifle me today, blackmail me when I talk today. Then you tell me that don't worry, when we get to the nation, I'll give you mouth to talk. <laughs> <laughs> You get my mouth and <laughs> then you struggle you find my mouth. Then you say, oh, Madam, well done, hold well on. You see this your mouth I tied like this. When we get to Biafra, I will untie it. You get padlock and padlock my mouth. Put one bag one padlock in my mouth. I say, when we get there, I will unlock it so that you can talk. I'll be stupid to follow you on that journey. I'll be stupid to follow you on that journey with my mouth padlocked. Hoping that when I get to Biafra land. You will unpack it, unpack it. That freedom we are preaching, we want to begin to see it now. We want to, because that's what the world, the international world, are watching. They want to see how we are going to work with each other. Absolutely. Because from the start of, they know us more than we know ourselves. This thing you are trying to say, you are putting the world on notice. <laughs> the world has been on notice since how many years ago? They were on notice before they came and invested in your land. They knew what they were doing, they were not dropped. They knew you were not going to wake up on time. That's why they came and took your land. So you're not putting them on notice. They know the Afra more than you. Anybody telling you that I discussed with somebody, they didn't really know what was going on. That's a lie. That's why they have diplomats representing nations in places. These diplomats, when they get to a nation, they recruit agents, local agents, and pay them. These agents go in and get them first class information. So they are in the know. They know. And immediately anything happens, within 24 hours, they send reports to their nation. Mm -hmm. Tell them what happened, explain the implications to them, and then advise them on what they should do. Then the nation that they are representing will tell them what to do to protect their interests. So you will be too gullible to think they are not aware that you are teaching them. They are aware they are just playing dumb. And when they see that you're not carrying your people along, they even like it because they will deceive you more. My people say that Anadi Homma rules in this. Anadi Homma rules in this. That means if you continue to be stupid and gullible, you're not working with your professionals and not doing the right thing, the people that are exploiting you, you're making their day. So they're happy. 
continue to be foolish, continue to be gullible, they know the truth, they are playing along with you. We cannot continue anymore. We cannot practice tyranny today and tell our people that suddenly we will convert into democracy when we get freedom. Things are not on that way. You see, my people are not really that stupid. Most of some people are complaining. Oh, the professionals are not joining us. Uh, these people are wicked. They are not joining us. They are not joining me because they are seeing through you. They are seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> they know that you have been bought over. Mm. They send here in the ring. They know they are like this. You know, okay. I'm not so okay. Drop. Bam. 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 Uh, some people are also not interested in franchise investment, you know. They they've already they are trying to recover from Adiboye's franchise, so they are not trying to franchise another franchise. You know, it's what we can the church about that we are doing. Now we're having a night with uh, <laughs> pastors and uh, we don't fight that. <laughs> 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 we're saying the summary of it is that we need to wake up, my people. You know, when the people we are uh, like I remember 2014. When people were telling uh, uh, those Fulanis, bringing Buhari, that this Buhari is a dictator, that he's not going to do anything. They say, no, Buhari is a born again democrat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have still have born again the youth. Yes. So we have to. And they say our people still have not learned from not doing their research before they promote anything. You know. It's crazy. And that's why we're calling them. You do not need to go to school. To have common sense. We are smart people naturally. Just use that your smartness to help yourself and your generation. Do not trust me too easily. Even Bible said it. Oh, the people was the Belia Christian was he said, he said these people, when you need to sing them in church, they will go and carry that Bible and study and research to verify what they were taught. Paul approved it, said this is the type of Christians we want. Not the ones that if you come and push anything into their mouth, they will say, yes, my pastor said so, my bishop said so, my pope said so. Meanwhile, look, we are both having Bible. Who can read it and know what it says? If somebody tells me, if I come and tell you that you need a hundred dollars per hour to get a consultant to uh, buy flat, Google it. Say, to get a consultant to do this in America, how much does it cost? Google it. We are in the age of internet. Who played them? You know why you use your data? You say you don't have data. They so use data to go and view the bum bum of a woman. Go and look at their cleavages. You say they're burning your data looking at cleavages. And you tell, in fact, somebody said you people deserve to be enslaved. I, <laughs> I reject it, my dear. I beg you. That's why we're here to help. That's what works with our people that we are trying to encourage them that we need to restore power to you first. You are what you do. You, the ordinary man. You, the technocrat. You, the professional. You, the woman. You, the man. You, the small child. You, the big. You, the small. Power needs to go back to you. So that when the power comes back to you, you see, you are empowered economically, Politically, everything and knowledge is what will empower you because when you know you will not be deceived you see and then when you know you will know the right questions to ask you will not push things down your throat and you just swallow it and say hallelujah oh hallelujah no when somebody tells you something even if it's me ask me some important questions if I don't answer those questions, or I get angry at you and say, who are you to ask? How dare you ask me? I've been helping you. I don't like all my uh, issues because uh, I was helping you. Now you're asking me questions. You should be suspicious of me. That will tell you that something is too strong. Because I'm trying to emotionally blackmail you. I might be in this struggle. We have lost things. But if I start, like when you ask me questions, I want to manipulate you and tell you, do you know I lost my fish? Do you know I lost uh, whatever people need to lose? Why are you asking me a question? I'll tell you, sorry, please. It's not about you. Because you're making it look as if it's about you. It's about our nation. It's about our, 
some people when you talk to them, you say, Do you know this person has lost this and I lost that thing? I say, Please, please. <laughs> I'm here for my people. It's not about me. And it's not about that person. You're missing the mark. It's about how to free my people. Thank you very much, Ross. It's absolutely about how to bring our people. And I like the idea of investigating. Don't take anyone for their words. Go and investigate. Do a little research. Ask yourself, especially it, it, this whole life is so funny because God always gives us evidence about things. It's just that we choose you know, to ignore it because we are not comfortable to deal with the consequences or we are not ready to deal with what it is. It's like a case of a husband who is cheating on the wife. There is no way your spirit will not let you know one way or the other. But because you're not ready to talk about divorce, you're not ready to move out of the house, you're not ready to be single, you keep pretending like it's not there until the woman starts talking you and start calling your house and telling you that your husband is not her husband. You know, that's how far people are willing to be in denial. So all we're saying is that when you get that little evidence, when you get that little voice, inner voice in your heart about things, that is the Holy Spirit whispering to you, go and check, go and check. So don't downplay it and then at the end of the day, you start crying foul, like we all cry foul. I remember one of my family members when uh, Buhari was about to take on, she was on fire. Oh, I had to shut up. Oh, Buhari is this, Buhari is that, Buhari is this. He's a good man. He only have one cow. Go, 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 go. So now they've seen that Buhari. And these are the things that they've been told at church. So this is the same way we don't want anybody anymore. We all have made that mistake, including me. I was following certain people thinking they are my Lord and my Savior, not knowing really that there is only God that can be my Lord and my Savior. So it's about time we start investigating about things before we start going out there and you know flying our wings because if you're too sentimental about things you will not be able when it's time for you to sit in your concept the consequences of the actions that you have taken it is not very comfortable so in order to avoid future mistakes it's always good even as we are talking for you to go and investigate go and say is this thing this people are saying does it make sense where are they get like you have to have an open mind because you cannot close your mind like oh go, go, go. then you go and check you will never see anything because your mind is closed you have to be willing to say i am willing to take even the most painful outcome while i'm doing this investigation that's how you know you're ready for the truth that whatever this investigation that i'm willing to do that at the end of the day i am willing to take the outcome no matter how painful it is then you have then you're, then that means you're honest with yourself you're ready to begin the the process but don't go and check when you have all these other things in your mind and how you've just, no, 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 let me go. No, you, you will never get the answer that you're looking for. And then we cannot call Chukwu Kikabiyama like I always will blame him and say, you were there for 400 years and my people were enslaved. And he said, duh, you were there for 400 years and I gave you brain to defend yourself and you did it. So he gave me the duh moment, you know, we had the opportunities. We have... People that are selling us out, nobody's doing anything about it. We know that elderly that will go and bring Fulanis to the village, nobody will do anything about it. Then I want to come and blame God for allowing Fulanis to be in my village. Whereas it was Igwe, there was Igwe that gave them the land. Has nothing to do with God. Igwe's house is next door to mine, it's open. I see it when I'm going to the market. Igwe, if it's I'll even bow to him when I see him in the morning. But he has sold my land to the, to the Fulanis. And then I want to blame God. So all we're saying is that it's about time we apply common sense. It's about time we do what works. It's about time we start looking into a way to ensure that we are not deceiving our people. We keep saying what we don't want is for you to think there is a container coming from the high sea. And you are in Biafra land, killing yourself, waiting for the container, thinking if this container comes, my life will become new. Only to open up the containers is full of full of full and he has man with AK-47. Or even worse yet, there's nothing in the container. So it's better that you tell yourself, let me go and make sure I uh, uh, call the captain of the sea. Please take a picture of that container and send it to me. Can my hand on email? Hmm? And I want updates because it's gonna take six months or whatever to get there. I want updates as you're coming with that container from different sources to ensure me for real naiha hibuna abia is really for me don't be too sentimental about it because you you will pay the price sister augusta your closing statement so we can go yeah that is true we shouldn't be sentimental about it because when the consequences when they come you will be the one bearing it 
So let us, uh, as we said before, we want all our technocrats and our diploma, whatever they are, to come and be part of this struggle. It is open for all. You are not taking any oath because a whole lot of them sat back because they are afraid that, oh, they got to take oath. So this time around, you're not taking any oath. You're not under anybody. You're not under any jurisdiction. You're not under anybody's power or whatever. You're not here to take a rules or laws or, 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 or what is it called, order from anybody. But what we are asking you is that if you know how to approach the system, if you know how to approach this people that needed to be approached, if you know how to talk to our, you know, our, our especially in the United States, if you know how to meet with our congressmen, if you know how to talk to them, because of course you you can talk to anybody, trust me. All you need is that channel that you know you can pass. The people. channel is there though. The channel is there for especially for those of us in the USA. <laughs> yeah, the election yeah. is coming up. This is a time now for you to invest your time, invest your effort, line up with a party and go out there. The good thing about these things, they alert you about the upcoming rally, upcoming event, so you can go there and do whatever and meet them one on one then you will do us a better uh, 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 justice if you are there at the grassroots join their office in what they are doing with this election process coming up join their office and be at the grassroots not to go to the rallies and take pictures no go on the ground join them let them know you by name let them call you on the phone with upcoming rallies and you know that you are in the pipeline we don't want people going to rallies and taking pictures and posting it for us because we can do that all day. We want you to know that your congressman, especially those of them coming off election, knows you by name. That yeah. now, Munachi can help me with my uh, 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 campaign this thing coming up. I can count on this AP to do this. These are the things that we are looking for. The access is there for us to. We are not in the zoo country for you to work directly with your congressman, especially those of us in diaspora. And that's true. We are not in the zoo country. They are approachable. You know, honestly, they are. Because they know that they need you to be where they want to go. So they are very, very approachable. So, but we need our people to start getting involved. You know, um, you know, we, we need the people that will, you know, talk, talk to people that really, really matter so that they would know that probably their businesses back at home will be secure. Because that is what America is looking for. America is looking for stability. Once if they know that, hey, if you get this freedom, my investment will be secured one way or the other, they're going to let us have it. Because stability is what drives this country. It drives it, it's what drives it. So we're just asking our people to get up there and, and be part of the struggle. Thank you, my sisters. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. And this process is, for those of us here in diaspora, this process is not hard. If you are not sure how to get started, you can contact us. Uh, we tell you how to join your local party and be involved in at the local level. Uh, from the local level, if there's something going on at the federal level, they also let you know for you to be part of it. As a matter of fact, we have the uh, Congresswomen from uh, uh, New York coming down here on the 4th, this coming Friday. So they keep you alert on all these things. And you get to see them one-on-one. -on -one. You get to have one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and all these things. So let's get ourselves involved in the political process, dear friends, especially here in diaspora. Get yourself in the political process. Don't be intimidated. This they they need they, they they are looking for volunteers they need us so let's inject ourselves into there just like any other communities have done and uh, get our voices heard over there you know that's what we are looking for and uh, for those of you that are in the uh, diplomat level do your thing everybody do their thing I think if everybody is working and not deceiving our people with picture taking we will get somewhere let's get working. Let's get work. Election is November. We have 10 more months to get in alignment with what we need to do and, you know, get these things going. You know, we going to, anyway, let's not, the, the, the forum is open, bottom line. The forum is open. So stay with you, please, your final statement before we go. Yes, sister, the forum is open. And these people are very approachable like this. And they keep you updated, they send you text, they say Trump is going to some place, he wants you to do the special whatever thing with him, you come along. They, if they are open, they're not like you. This is the public. They want to work with the people because they need your vote. So, um, like as you saw, also talk about stability. You know, sometimes people talk about the investment, the oil and everything. So these things also even help us to get our independence fast. If we know how to talk, that's to ensure that that there's investment, that there will be stability, because they're tired of all this today, they do, they do, they don't like it. Because when all these things are happening, they can't invest to make money. These people make 
make money. They are capitalists. They want to new, look new environments where they can make money. Like our nation needs to be built. They are looking for how to can come in to do like Dubai that was built. You think it was Dubai people that built it? No. It's all these people that went to investors. Businessmen. Mm -hmm. yes. Businessmen are looking for where there is stability so that they can go and invest. So we have a good case. Anytime you talk to any of them privately, they will tell you you have a good case. But what they want to see is how we can work together. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are telling our people. The open minded. In some accounts, more than say we have about 42 uh, groups, service and mission groups in our area. Each of them, they have what they are good at and what they are not good at. The people not close your mind. Open your mind and like, brother, what are you doing? Sister, what are you doing? Oh, no, don't do that like that. Do it this way. Then we will work together as a country. It's no one man's business and it's no one woman's business. Please, our brothers and sisters, we are begging you. And that's why this topic says restoration of power to the people. We need to understand the power that you have. Stop being a person of that land. That power you can give it, whether you are at home or in your store. But you have to drop this idea of thinking that you will kill other people and only you will be going to Africa or bring whatever nation you want. No. You cannot demean and destroy your brothers and sisters. And then you wake up one day. <laughs> A new nation. Bravo. Even God does not stand with something like that. Deception. If you're working with God, you will not leave you on that path. And that's why we're saying, please, if we call God's name, let's not call God's name in vain. Let's show it in our character. The way we talk to our people. Where we have an open mind to work with our brothers and sisters because we are one people, we are one people. Let's show it in what we do because the world is in the thing. Once they see us that we are together, we are working together because they don't want another city, they want a good nation. They're tired of Africa being the state Africa is, they are really tired, so they are really looking forward to a stable Africa. So, please, let's lead our people towards stability towards peace, towards mutual respect and mutual honor. Thank you very much. See you again next week. Stay safe All right. So we call on lovers of freedom and defender of equity and liberty to stand and be counted. We must understand that this struggle belongs to all of us. Every Biafran is a stakeholder, and we know that Biafra restoration is our civic duty. We need to fight together facing one enemy called the zoo government with the Fulani uh, uh, Brotherhood. Do not sit down waiting for anyone to tell you what to do for this restoration project. Start work from where you are. Do not deceive our people. Let's do what works because our people are dying. We do not need to attend any church or any place promoting the zoo country while our people are dying. We must boycott everything that is against our freedom. We do not need to uh, get an order to market Biafra in your uh, location, especially those of us living in diaspora. We know that Muslims have the agenda to rule the world. Once they give birth, they start teaching them about taking what does not belong to them. Some of them are uh, into politics, some are in business, some are into banking. Some of them are marrying our daughters and carrying our uh, uh, cattle around our land. And some of them are into terrorism. Some are in Africa, London, America studying. Some are uh, into religion and jihadists, learning how to kill our will cutting people's neck off and putting, posting it on our Facebook account, and we are watching them complete it while we sit around and castigate each other. Let's get together, people. We, the mothers of the land, want things to be done, wrong, to, the, to, to be done right. We want this uh, uh, restoration project to quickly come to fruition. We want people that matters to come together and start doing what they need to do. And we want to thank everyone from the bottom of our heart, everyone that is working truly to ensure this restoration project. Until next week, we'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.